If you have not seen I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, please do yourself a yeah. favor and, and go watch that movie. It is a bit of a somber <laughs> note to start on, but I, did, I think we'd be uh, wrong to not acknowledge the passing of Jim Brown. Facts. Okay. If you have ever read anything about him, a truly heroic man. Yes. Not just on the field, but off the field as far as his stance on civil rights, the things he's done as far as trying to intervene in gang violence. Yep. With the American, you know, I mean, it, but, uh, you know, if you do your, your Googles and get to going down a wiki, you know, he had some issues with being able to control his anger around women, which yep. he never really acknowledged, which I think is the one part of his history that's not particularly heroic. Right. But you know what? I mean, everyone's not perfect, you know, but this is a guy who literally didn't lock his doors because in case any of the gang members need to come hide out. Yeah. This is a man who, after leading the NFL in rushing, when Art Modell said, you have to come back or else I'm going to start finding you while he's filming The Dirty Dozen. He said, you know, you are calling me out like you are insulting my manhood. Right. By, and first of all, if there's anybody that probably didn't need training camp, it was Jim Brown. I mean, this, this is a dude that. So I, I think that, you know, when you talk about him, it's, it's a lot going on because I, I just know I know a lot about Jim Brown because my, my father is, is, was, is very much an admirer of Jim Brown. In fact, so much so that um, back in the 80s, we, there was a, a, a black book fair that came to St. Louis. It's a Cervantes Convention Center. You know, and Jim Brown was like the main person. He was signing his book. And my, we went as a family like we had to go. And like, you know, my dad is not one who's particularly in awe of, you know, other people, you know, and other men and their accomplishments, you know, because he's, he's he's he stands on his own and his own accomplishment. And but I tell you what, he was impressed to meet and just talked about how big and strong his hands were. You know what I'm saying? My dad and my dad is not a small cat. So. My pops used to say, you know, man's man. It was just a, a thing to where, you know, you know, Jim Brown was one of those people when I saw him, you know, of all the people who ran up and started sitting next to Donald Trump when he first got elected, Don, Jim Brown was the one person I was like, all right, whatever. Everybody else, I was like, come on, man. But Jim Brown, I was like, also, if you if you look at what America can, you know, that was, you know, it was it was partially about, you know, Malcolm, but it was also about Ronald Reagan because Jim Brown was. You know, he was as core capitalist because part of the reason why he decided not to come back to the NFL after he led the league in rushing is like, I make more money doing this movie than uh, running up and down, you know, your football field getting hit in my legs. So Tim Brown was in I his made, prime. I, I, you know, I'm making a, a, a business decision as much as a decision about like, you will not call out my manhood and tell me where I need to be and where I need to be there. So, like I said. Shout out to Jim Brown, an American original and a man's man, you know, but someone who had real flaws. We're talking about a dude that played nine seasons in the NFL and quit, pursued acting, was on his activist. And we're talking about pure dominance. Oh, like, no. Like he averaged what he averaged five yards a carry, five yards a carry, led the league in rushing eight of the nine years. The only year he didn't is because he played the entire season with a broken toe. These are this is a guy that. There are a lot of football players. I've heard people call him the best football player. I've heard people say top five, and that transcends any era. Because there's certain players where you say, "Could this player play in a certain era?" If you, Jim Brown is one of the people that transcends eras. If like you, you extrapolate the, era. the his numbers, extrapolate it. I like that. His I like production. That. You know, here's somebody who you know in a 17 game season would probably run for about 2,400 yards a season. Like I said, you got to understand what five yards a carry, averaging five yards a carry is. That means every two times he touches the ball, it's the first down. So I'm just it's saying, solid option, right? you know, <laughs> through his entire career, it never, it never went, you know, here's a guy when he got to Syracuse, you know, he, he, he was on the basketball team. He played lacrosse. Like he did it all, and the thing is, not just a top-notch athlete. He was, he was a, he was a scholar as well. He was, this, he was a sharp cat. You know, he just wasn't somebody who you could give him the ball, and then if you ask him a question, it, it, you know, you'd be like, oh, let's just ask him about football. You ask him about anything else, you're going to get an answer that you may not be comfortable with. And he wasn't about that foolishness either. So the man did not play. Like, like I said, Jim Brown is is somebody that will be missed in the culture of sport and just in the culture in general. Well, somebody educate me real quick because I'm I'm blanking on the movies and one movie is coming to mind. I, I don't I'm going to get you sucker. sucker. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> was he in that? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Oh, bro. I, like, I don't want to. Y'all talking all, you know, you're talking really good about this man, but putting a lot of respect on his movie, name. Man. I was like, 
Man, I remember this dude from "I'm gonna get you sucker." <laughs> yeah. I would have been. He was. No, in, that's what I. That's what I knew age, him from. Right? If I, if I, yeah. if if my dad wasn't, a, you know, a, a fan of the original Cleveland Browns, and mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't know. I just know him as, you know, an original gangsters. You know, it was filmed in Gary, Indiana. You know, yeah. he's, yeah. <laughs> you know, Shout he was in a, any given Sunday. He was in right? any given yeah. Sunday. Yeah. You know, going back, he was in. You know, he's doing movies with, with with white women when that wasn't even something you was supposed to be doing back in the day. Shout out to Raquel but Welch. Ben love. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he was a he was a Pioneer. Yeah. If you, if you haven't seen, <laughs> like, I've seen this movie maybe a thousand times. This is back when we recorded, you know, joints on VHS. Mm-hmm. If you have not seen I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, please do yourself a yeah. favor and, and go watch that movie. It is a, a classic black exploitation film it's adapted a send up of, yeah. into the late 80s and 90s, and it is a, a gym. It's a gym. By the. Uh, Wayans Brothers, actually. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was, yeah. That was yeah. Hey, the Wayans. That was Keenan. That was the, Keenan. They've been getting paper for a long time as Absolutely. a family, yes, though. Yes, yes. 